The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. Doesn't matter where you're at in the world, as long as you're here at the appointed time. <clears throat> the following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So, we got the Fed just come out with minutes. Uh, S&P's down, uh, what, 28 points. Uh, NASDAQ off almost about 250. Uh, Dow had a big pop in the morning. It's uh, back to, you know, I'm going to call it flat at the moment. Um, see what else we have here. Uh, yeah, Dow's up 27, a little better than that. Off 24 on the S&P, uh, NASDAQ down 250, 251. Russell uh, off about a percent, uh, 2246. And, of course, uh, really the thing that I'm paying attention to uh, is the reversal today uh, on a on the uh, bonds and the TLT. It tried to uh, run up a little higher in the morning, and it was instantly crushed. Uh, as we talked yesterday, I suspect that we're coming back to uh, three, uh, 137 to 139 for the first step and we could get down as low as 136 to 132 i think in the first round of what the fed is doing and that is probably the most important thing uh that being said uh, while we had a little bit of selling nothing's been broken in the market quite yet and the fed's job is to always uh, kind of let uh the market pull back slowly they don't like things moving quickly because that's when things break and, uh, and people that uh, probably shouldn't have been doing what they've been doing uh, get exposed. And uh, whether it's uh, the dot-com pop in 2000 or the housing bubble in 2008, you always find out, uh, as Warren Buffett says, who's swimming without a bathing suit when the tide goes out. Uh, the Fed is always uh, trying to figure out uh, who was doing uh, what they shouldn't have been doing. Um, but... Uh, Generally, if it happens slower, of course, you always have a little bit more opportunity to respond. Um, so always a little worried about that. Uh, you can give me a call today, 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. And uh, I've got some questions, but again... Uh, it would mean that I am reading the mind and the future mind of the Fed and its Fed president. But uh, I'm probably more going to react uh, when I see signs that they get involved uh, than uh, predict the absolute bottom. I'm very good at predicting what a lot of people will do. I'm very bad at predicting what a single individual or even a handful uh, like the Fed folks will do. But uh, I think um, when you look at uh, betting pools like uh, the bond market, you get a pretty good uh, wisdom of crowds kind of thing going on uh, with the market. And uh, so we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, again, 877-927-6648. Now, we're probably going to have a lot of back and forth here over the next hour. I don't know if we're going to get any kind of clear referendum on uh, the Fed notes. Uh, but uh, it hadn't been good so far today. Uh, the reversal off the highs on the Dow also uh, are interesting. But, uh, uh, you know, if you listen long enough, you'll find people that are just continually wrong all the time. But they may be right on one thing. And yesterday had me kind of thinking the, the standard thing uh, from Joe Granville. And that was uh, he always said that... Uh, uh, the first, uh, the, when the Titanic's hit, the first thing is all the people run to the stern of the ship. Yeah, stern of the ship, because it went down by the bow. But uh, when I look at it, all I can think of is everybody running into the 
quote, quote, safe stocks yesterday was really not something very good. It just tells you eventually that all of them are headed lower. But, um, you know, over time, will the Dow probably outperform in the, this year? Uh, probably. But we're going to have to get to some level that the Fed uh, stops at and then see what happens. And, you know, you don't know um, how that's going to happen. Generally, I can say that the market, once it figures out the Fed is really not lying to it and doesn't fold like a $5 suitcase as it has in the past, uh, then you're going to get a very sharp uh, correction. That correction will happen extremely quickly. And then at that point, you'll find out whether or not it's worth buying or not. But uh, generally, you get those fast uh, reactions, and then the market settles down for a while, and the Fed won't do much uh, until uh, maybe if inflation's still high, they'll go down uh, and ratchet another round of uh, tightening into everything. But uh, there's a lot that they can do uh, on a daily basis that they don't have to talk to us about, a lot about uh, the balance sheet. But... Uh, I don't think you can bet on anything other than the TLT heading lower in the next week. As I said before, I thought we could get down to 139-ish uh, within the next seven days, and I don't think that that is a stretch, uh, depending on the way that the markets are already acting. Uh, but you don't know if the Fed is going to decide to just jump in front of that bus and stop it, uh, which is always the, the thing. It's... You know, if you have a lot of people, easy to tell. If you have a few people, they're really not sure what they're thinking of uh, down below. But I think that we're probably going to get to 139, at least when you read the charts, before the Fed starts, uh, like I said, uh, jumping in front of the train. Uh, well, let's take a look. Yeah, we're off 32, 33 on the S&P cash. NASDAQ's uh, eh, two, down to 90. A uh, lot of froth in those uh, NASDAQ stocks, but I think right now, as far as the street goes, it's all about the P.E. They want things that uh, everybody's going to be running for the things that have, uh, at least at the beginning, dividends and stocks with low P.E.s and good balance sheets. They want people, as interest rates go higher, they want companies that don't need money, which is probably why you're going to see something like Apple not do uh, horribly, uh, but uh, you're going to find other stocks that actually truly need money, like the biotechs, uh, almost always under fire, and uh, why I have a feeling they could do incredibly well this year, we do need to find them uh, finding some kind of level of support. Now, when we talk about the biotechs, I've been waiting for them uh, to give me a fairly good signal. Uh, we should be finding, at least in the IBB, some level of support. Let's take a quick look at the chart as we go to the break. But, uh, I don't know, a lot of stuff to talk about. Well, uh, i got to read the uh, notes yet. Uh, since I was on the air, I really didn't get a good idea of it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I knew we were pretty close. 143.25 on the IBB, that's the September 6th low. Uh, we're going to go back and retest that today. So far, the volume pretty good. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Well, we got a fast market. Uh, we've got uh, gold moving, and uh, I did not look at it during the break, but I probably should have. Uh, I've got the last tick at eighteen twenty-one. I don't know if that is right or not. We may have some uh, lag in some of these things. Maybe somebody in the den can tell me. Uh, anyway, we were talking about the uh, IBB uh, eighteen sixteen. Okay. Close enough. Uh, huh? Yeah, I think this is... I think I've got a couple of things that are delayed here. Not fun. Uh, anyway, we're going to talk about what else is going on in the market. Uh, one of the bigger movers today, although it's faded, has been CCJ. Um, I was looking at it fairly hard uh, to buy... Uh, and uh, over the last, well, I almost bought it on Friday. Would have been a nice little pop, but I was looking for a very long-term hold in it. Uh, we've got the Prime Minister of Kazakhstan. Uh, I think it's kind of uh, Kazakhstan in the Ukraine. Anyway, uh, resigning. And they are the biggest uh, producers of uranium in the world. And, of course, the thought is uh, that uh, it could go into chaos around that area. Uh, there's a whole bunch of issues uh, with, uh, I'm trying to think, a whole bunch of issues with, the uh, way I term it, um, corruption uh, that goes back years and even floods into the U.S. Uh, political system to the highest level, as they always like to say in the movies, the highest level, if you know what that means in code. Uh, but we've got corruption uh, here in the United States. But anyway, they've got uh, worse corruption there. And, of course, uh, he did something that they didn't like uh, and started raising uh, uh, prices on energy. Uh, for a country that's got energy coming out the uh, ears, um, well, the whole kit and caboodle of uh, the government uh, got tossed out before they got uh, murdered, hung, spindled and mutilated by their uh, by the people inside the country. And that's what uh, Kamiko bounced today on. 
So uh, uranium, as you're watching that, just know that it's a supply and demand issue. But uh, there were probably way too many people short uh, Cameco thinking it was going to go back uh, to a longer term trend lower. But uh, uranium uh, back on the uh, front lines of yeah, what else is there? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, comments in the den. Anyway, we're off 41 on the S&P. So, yeah, uh, back down. Um, a lot of stuff does not look good out here. Uh, the first question of the day, and then we'll get to NVIDIA, which is the second question of the day. Uh, first question of the day was on Tesla. Uh, where would I see this on a long-term scale of selling? Uh, almost all of these, if they break uh, the three-day uh, downside, uh, I mean the uh, three-day uh, displaced moving average, these things could see a world of hurt. Um, I'm not a big fan, as we talked about Tesla yesterday. Uh, in the in the big scheme of things, uh, who lied more? Uh, the gal uh, that's uh, now going to jail uh, for the private company, which she lied about, or uh, the uh, Tesla Motors, in which uh, we've got the CEO who has lied, I'm going to say, 10 times of major lies. I was thinking about actually doing it. I may do it tomorrow, and that is a montage of everything that he said that has never come true. Uh, he said in 2017 that he'd have 30,000 taxis, self-driving taxis by 2019. Well, that's three years in the rearview mirror with nothing. Uh, in uh, 2019, he said it was a year away from uh, delivering semis that ran on batteries. Uh, to haul around big trucks. Uh, what we found out is that even a high school dropout could have figured out if he'd spent one year in physics uh, that uh, 80, 70 percent of the load would have had to have been batteries to pull anything approaching 80,000 pounds. So probably not a good idea. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, oh, the Hyperloop. Remember all that? Brouhaha. Uh, he he did drill a, a tunnel, and it cost exactly what everybody else charged for tunnels before he charged uh, for that. But he was, of course, going to drop the price of tunnels uh, by 90 percent. Uh, didn't happen at all. Uh, solar roofs, and I think this is going to be his downfall. We talked about it in the den for a little bit yesterday. That is, there's a lawsuit uh, stemming from that Solar City um, acquisition. Uh, in which he saved his brother-in-law, who was the CEO of that company, by buying the company. Of course, he didn't want uh, everybody to think that, uh, you know, that uh, he wasn't going to stand behind everything. So he used one company uh, to absorb the uh, faults of uh, many other companies, uh, but mostly on Solar City. Uh, anyway, seven uh, people, humans, have already settled that lawsuit. Uh, those are directors, people around it, uh, everybody else. One person that hasn't settled that lawsuit is Musk himself. And my guess is they're going to drive this uh, lawsuit into the courts where they're going to get discovery. And they're going to be able to read all the juicy emails of where he said uh, all kinds of stuff internally. And uh, it won't match what he said externally in the company. Um, and, of course, at that point, maybe they'll be willing to cough up a little bit more money. But uh, when you look at him, there's, you know, he said he had to sell uh, a lot of his shares, and I think he sold $4 billion worth of his own share so far. Just remember that is now on the market. And also, why did he sell those? Well, he's going to need some cash uh, if uh, everything turns south. On him, he's going to want to walk away with a little bit of spending money, and four billion dollars is fine. But uh, I don't think he spent all that or sold all of that just to pay taxes. I think there's a little more out there. Um, eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. We're going to get to Nvidia here now. Uh, I'm off forty one points on the S and P now. As I said, I'm not going to. I'm going to wait probably until the close to see how this market really reacts. But it hasn't been good. 
Uh, question uh, from uh, Todd. The Todd. If you're a big Bojack uh, Horseman fan, the Todd. Uh, NVIDIA, NVDA. Um, you're kind of coming back into what should be some support. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, okay. I'm going to say I'm not going to predict more than what it's doing out here, but uh, 270 is support on this. And so far, you've come down with lighter volume. Today will be important as you start to get back into that candle for uh, $272.50 from December 14th. We'll be back in a minute. fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the tiger's den trading room only at tfnn.com the tiger's den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And as we get back uh, to the market, Already in progress over most of TFNN. Uh, down 40 on the S&P. Oh, let's update that just to make sure here. Yeah, off uh, 39 and change on the S&P. Down 82 on the Dow, but kind of a reversal, but not a huge one off of 
Uh, the highs of uh, 37,000 today. Uh, Nasdaq's down 300 bucks, but it's been for sale for a little while. Uh, Russell 2000 uh, down 34 points, which one and a half percent. So it's the second biggest loser. But of course, uh, yeah, the Nasdaq, the big loser today. Uh, do I have that? I have a losing horn. <laughs> As I said yesterday, um, had a uh, update before the bell yesterday morning in the Tech Insider just to be extremely worried about being long any kind of uh, tech stocks. Um, as interest rates go up, people will probably do some things that are probably not quite correct. But uh, um, a lot of people are thinking that money's going to be hard to get. And, of course, there's going to be a little bit more competition. But um, eventually, I think we're going to find some kind of low. People are going to say, well, as long as I don't invest in these flaky companies uh, that are basically Robin Hood, uh, run them up the pole and see if we can uh, run some short uh, squeeze things. And actually, companies that probably have a product and make some money, that's kind of it. But uh, you can think of other companies like uh, Tesla. That's going to have to spend billions and billions and billions to produce cars. Um, that money is going to cost more. Um, companies that were rather dubious, at least coming back to, uh, to some levels. But um, looking at GameStop, well, almost a 10% loser on the day. Uh, it's coming back. It's not quite into the low of, what is that, uh, to, to, to December 14th at 129.50. Six and a half million shares on that day. We got a little under two million shares. Tomorrow, probably going to be a much bigger deal. And we'll see how the market reacts if they uh, if the selling picks up. So far, not a lot of people selling this. Uh, this is off $255.69. Uh, it's a company that makes no money. And people still are not thinking about selling it, which tells you that why... Uh, the trend is there. A lot of people are sitting on their hands uh, thinking it's going to do it once again. Eventually, this company will be bankrupt. But uh, like Sears and Kmart before it, they were bankrupt companies in the uh, mid-2000s, late 2000s. Uh, we had uh, people like uh, Kramer running around saying they were all land banks. And, of course, all they did was uh, run those companies up. Uh, for his buddies, and of course, uh, allow them to sell into uh, what was uh, a real estate investment trust. For the most part, there was no chance that Kmart or Sears was ever coming back. Bring me the head of the false prophet, Jim Kramer. Oh, that's right. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Email me with your questions, uh, and see what else we have going on here. As I said, uh, down 42 at the moment. Uh, question about the SMHs. Um, I mean, the, you got the one big problem with the SMHs, and that is uh, what happens if China invades Taiwan? Are they just going to continue to threaten them? Um, I'd say uh, last year I kind of put it at a 10% uh, chance. I'm going to say I'm up to about 20% now on China uh, actually invading Taiwan to take it over. Uh, that could go up. But uh, one in five chance right now, you know, getting ready for the Olympics, is it going to happen? Eh, I don't know. But uh, I would say a lower chance than a higher chance. They would have done it a little while ago. But uh, after the everybody's left uh, and people quit uh talking about uh, their slaves and uh, human harvesting of organs and all the other stuff that literally comes right out of the playbook of the Nazis in the 1930s. Um, yeah, what can you say? Um, you do not have a lower volume test around that 288, 290 level. We've seen it come in there. So uh, at the meantime, kind of bouncing around between these highs, uh, but the volume is about the same on the high and the low. All I can say is short of intervention by China into Taiwan, these all do well. 
Uh, I'm still uh, at the point where I would either be short uh, the SMHs, uh, but if I was going to be long, and there probably is a good case for that, uh, not today, uh, but if you get a good test of uh, this uh, 290 level and support hangs and we find out this thing's just uh, bouncing around in a big trading range, uh, I would always play these now with options going forward. There's just too big a risk. Uh, at uh, one in five, it uh, doesn't sound like a preponderance of the evidence says they will, uh, but uh, I wouldn't want to wake up and find out my stocks were gutted by 80%. Which, if you're playing NVIDIA or AMD, certainly could be the story of this year later on. Uh, anyway, uh, AMD uh, broke a little bit yesterday. We're coming back to this level of support that has not yet been tested. That's the 13060 level. That's the December 14th low. That had uh, 51 million shares. Uh, you got 46 million shares already. So actually coming back uh, a bit. But, uh, you know, the business is good. That's it. I know Intel has done a little bit better, but I have a feeling a lot of that uh, was based on short covering. Um, they had some good news at CES. It wasn't that good in news, but they did have a lot of shorts in it. Uh, they went through the previous high of December 7th, a day that will live in infamy. Had 92 million shares at 55 bucks. You went to 56.17 today. You got about 40 million shares. So trying to break the previous high on half the volume so far today. So, again, I'm not a big fan of Intel. I think it's going to take maybe another year for them to turn around. But, you know, could they have bounces like this? They can. Uh, okay. Other things going on. Question about Apple. AAPL. Uh, of course, Apple has kind of the same problems other than the fact that they're doing a lot of their assembly and manufacturing in China. Um, don't know if that changes much of anything. You've got a good sell signal from Apple. It went to 182.13 with 153 million shares back on December 13th. You tested that yesterday with 99 million shares. So tested it on a day that wasn't a holiday. You did it with uh, 50 million less shares, uh, and you're pulling back. But uh, is it the end of the world? No. Big trading range back down to 140 or 167.46 on that one. Uh, other things. We come back. Uh, Ron wants to look at Earth Day. That. And uh, continue on. And I will return, Mike MacArthur to the Philippines. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. got a question from Hector, uh, the heir to the Holly carburetor fortune. Apparently, no connection to fuel injection. See what I did there? Anyway, uh, Hector uh, brings up, uh, are people still hammering away on AMD and NVIDIA? And the answer is, of course, yes. Uh, these, uh, every morning in the uh, newsletter, I have a list <coughs> of the FINRA uh, shorts. Now, you don't know whether or not people covered before the end of the day, but you do know at some point they were short, and it gives you an indication, uh, an inference of where everybody is going on and uh, chasing people. So, anyway, uh, AMD, NVIDIA, yeah. Uh, now, is this as much uh, as we've had in the past? No. So, in fact, uh, I wrote in my newsletter that we had some of the lowest levels of shorting ever. And one of the reasons why I put some warnings in the newsletters early this week, that is you got to keep an eye out on what's going to happen. Now, does this mean uh, it's all over? Uh, we'll never be long again. It's time to be short for forever. Uh, just remember that markets go up even in bear markets three-fourths of the time. They just go up a whole lot less in bear markets and then take a very quick uh, rip lower and then slowly start to recover, give everybody some help or some hope, and then dash it all to hell. They actually did it. They actually sold some stock. Anyway, uh, going back to work day for Ron, uh, as we look at this, uh, you're back to the support levels. Uh, you hammered it yesterday with 5 million shares. Not doing much else here, but yeah, you had a gap higher on 7.4 million shares going back to uh, August, or uh, is that, oh yeah, August uh, 27th. And that has been kind of where the support has come. You came back, tested it with light volume, ran to 307.81. And of course, you're coming back to 245 yesterday, bounced a little bit out here. I would have liked to seen the energy uh, really expand off the November 17th level. But as I said, I suspect what the Fed's going to do is rip the Band-Aid off, let everybody squeal for a while, probably even things out a little bit. And then another couple of months down the line, we're going to get a little bit more. Well, we've got to raise it. Inflation's pretty high. We've got to get back to it. So there's going to be a lot of fits and starts uh, to their program until we find some level of homeostasis. I used a big word there instead of using a small word. Uh, where uh, they're going to enjoy uh, the way the market is, but uh, I think at some level there is people arguing that the Fed is trying to figure out how the market's going to react with no stimulus uh, for the latest uh, variant. 
uh, Omicron Perseus 6, if you're a fan of Futurama. But uh, that's it. Uh, so we got that. We got that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, yep. Uh, people in the den uh, talk about the polar plunge because uh, they tend to get some selling here in this hour sometimes. Uh, certainly, we got it now down 61 points on the S&P cash. Uh, NASDAQ's off 390. Uh, Russell 2000's off uh, yeah, pretty much 40 points. Okay, again, um, well, you got a little bit of ray of hope uh, with the way the TLT's acting. Um, and not blowing up uh, into this deluge of selling. Uh, but uh, I don't think it's going to matter. By tomorrow, the next couple of days, people are going to start looking uh, about going into the weekend, and we're probably going to see that selling tomorrow. Um, options expiration really starts late this year or this uh, month. Uh, the first Friday of the month is, of course, uh, this week. So you're going to go to the 21st. So we've got uh, two weeks and two days. Uh, of uh, trading before we go into options expiration. I don't think that options are really going to tell us a lot in probably until on Friday of this week. I really like it when they get to uh, Delta Neutral Day. That tells us a lot more. But right now, they're kind of all over the place. And like I said, by generally, I think now that we've had some downside, if we get people to really start shorting, uh, shorting, uh, shorting, shorting uh, the markets in uh, excess, then we can get a bounce. If they continue to see people, for most stocks, not do much of anything, uh, we could see a lot more. Anyway, keep close eye. The most important ticker on the uh, on your uh, screen should be the TLT as a uh, amalgam of the 10 and 20 year. Uh, okay. Question about dust. Uh, does this change everything uh, from Alan? Uh, well, you certainly um, have kind of a little bit of a turnaround out here. Uh, but uh, no, uh, as I've said over the last few years, if we're going to get a downturn, everything tends to go down for the first couple of weeks. And I can say that today is kind of a, at least a one day or two day event. Um, don't be surprised to see gold uh, weak. Now, will it continue to outperform? Certainly, if the inflation continues to be high and they're raising rates, probably not a bad combination uh, to be in for, uh, is gold. But uh, you know what? It's uh, in the scheme of things, not a big deal. Um, I think uh, what you would like to see actually is uh, maybe another week or so of this thing kind of playing around and then the move uh, higher uh, if the market's going to uh, continue to move lower you're probably going to see two weeks of indeterminate action in gold and then it will uh, take off like a john uh, johnny ripper i guess i'm going to do my australian accent yeah a ripper not exactly sure what that meant, but everybody kept saying it when I was over there. Uh, question about the XLE. We had a big spike in Brent today. Um, that kind of did it for the XLE. It is not high, uh, holding the previous high so far, 59.41 of October 26. Um, today, what are we at now? 59.59. So you're close, but you're not no cigar. Uh, you want to watch how that one closes today. You had plenty of volume. You're just not holding the high. Uh, did I already do CRM? No, I did not. Uh, okay. See anything else in here? Okay. Uh, CRM um, has got downgraded today they're not looking for anything uh the target price was 250 or 260 or something so basically saying that uh things were just going to get worse in the downgrade i don't know how much 
stock I put on that. The big problem I have is the same problem that LinkedIn had. We'll talk about that when we wrap up the show. Another excellent edition. Uh, the last two minutes, the two minute warning. Next up. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, billable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we get ready to wrap up another show, uh, looking at Salesforce CRM, um, we've got uh, two big gaps in this already. Uh, Zach asks uh, my perspective on gaps. I don't have enough time to get to all of it. Uh, we'll do that tomorrow, Zach. Uh, email me again just in case I forget, but I will star your email. Uh, I do have a question on Salesforce. Um, 20891. The problem I have with Salesforce is it is trying to compete without the kind of economies of scale that uh, Amazon, Microsoft, and uh, Google have, and that is continued to be problematic for Salesforce. Um, it's just so much cheaper uh, to get whatever you've got if you're a, a big user. Uh, we talked a bit yesterday about containerizing things. Uh, they're not really uh, the kind of containerizing folks and uh, being kind of the odd man out made the money for a little while. I think that's becoming problematic for them now. Uh, to, to, to question, uh, 
Uh, Avago, A V G O. Um, how far could this pull back? I think, you know, just not having a real problem, David, uh, it could come back to 600 bucks and still be in an uptrend. Um, this company has always worried me. This is like a lot of other companies that continue to just buy other companies. You'd never know what the books are really saying. Uh, but um, I would say that you it, it's not going to instantly go there. But I wouldn't want to be long this thing again until it tested $600 with lighter volume. So I'd be a fan of that. So, Zach, we'll talk about gaps tomorrow. Uh, we do have a lot of gaps in the stocks the last couple of days. I generally talk about three gaps. If you get two, you got an 8% chance of getting a three, uh, third gap that's fairly long. If we're talking about uh, So when you can, not when you have to. Never more important than today. And we'll see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.